Hey, Box friends. We're glad you're joining us today. This is going to be a fun lesson. My name is Catherine, and this is my dear friend and painting companion, Anne. And this is her second video uh, with me. So if you've been here since last summer with us, uh, you'll have, remember Anne's watermelon painting with yes. us. And she shared her watermelon recipe with us. We're going to have to think of a March recipe to go with this one. Yes. See, Anne used to be a caterer and she can cook just about anything you can imagine. She's just, a, and used to be a neighbor of mine as well. So she's, we've shared a lot of meals together and we've traveled to France together to paint, initially to paint. And then we pretended we were painting <laughs> the next few trips. So anyway, here we are with March. I thought last March we painted a lamb because the saying, what used to be in like a lion, out like a lamb for March. And so this- in like a lamb. Is it out like a lion? I don't know. <laughs> so we're doing the lion today. And um, for those of you who've been with me for quite a while, this is the first time we're actually doing like a close up of a face. And so I tried really hard to find a way to make this lesson easy and not too hard because faces can be hard. But I think this, this big lion face is going to be pretty easy. I'll walk you through it step by step. And Anne's going to paint along with me. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you back here at step one. Okay, and here we go. We're going to get started on the lion. Have you painted a lion before? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. Uh, we're using these water soluble oils. So we're going to use water to dip into your little cup of water there. Just get your brush a little bit loose and a little bit of drop of water on this yellow ochre. This is what we're going to use to draw with. And you'll see all this in your written instructions as well. Um, so the first thing I do before I start drawing, I always just mark my little halfway points. You learn that in drawing school. It helps you gauge your measurements. So I'm going to go right here below this top mark and I'm going to mark the top of his fur about one inch down and I'm going to make, mark the side of his mane about an inch over and then I pushed him a little bit off he's a little bit off center so we see some of his back so this side over here is maybe like an inch and a quarter a little bigger than this side and let's just draw kind of a big arch in there And right at about the center marker, right? Maybe it's going a little below that angle of his back going off the page there. So let's finish the, um, the bottom circle of his mane. It comes off right to about an inch above the center dot there. And it comes pretty much in a big circle, finishing out the big circle. And then Then I've got a paw coming out, kind of uh, coming off the page here a little bit. And so it's like a little rectangle there. And then another right about here. And you can kind of bring some of that fur down. Hair or fur, I guess, I don't know. Mane. It's a mane, mane fur, mane hair. In some animals, it's different. So then for the face, I'm going to come down. He's got just about an, only an inch of mane showing up at the top. So we come down about an inch. Draw another little semicircle for the top of his head. And then this is the part that gets a little tricky. When you're painting animals and bodies and humans, anything in nature, we refer a lot to curves or rectangular or geometric shapes. And quite often in nature, you'll see what we call an S-curve. So this is going to be a very flattened out S-curve that kind of goes like that to make his side of the face. So it's just like if you were make, drawing an S, but it, then you could kind of flatten it out. Very good, eh? And then this one has to kind of come in and the opposite way. And then we're going to get the eyes. Now, people often put eyes too low 
or too high. So I think these eyes are right about at the, the one quarter mark. Or let's see, maybe one third mark from the top here. So if you were to divide that in thirds. And I hope I got that about right. And he's looking off to the side a little bit, so his nose is a little bit over here towards the right. And I think that's about it. I will go ahead and add the little, uh, there's a kind of a mountain in the back here in Africa, and another hill in the front, and just some other hills and fields in the back. I've never been to Africa. Have you, Anne? Nope. Well, I guess I'll never, probably never get there. <laughs> I have a lot of friends and a lot of students who've been on these fabulous safari trips. My brother brought some great Africa pictures. Oh, <clears throat> you could paint some of those. Mm -hmm. So that's enough. I think that's just enough for the skeleton of the drawing. Um, yeah, put the nose over here just a little bit to the right, not center. And yes, it's kind of like a little Y shape little X kind of a T shape or Y shape. So I'm going to pause the drawing and let you guys get caught up. I was thinking in this in this project box I might even send an 8 by 10 sheet of paper that you all could trace to get that drawing on there. Oh, because people worry you. about their <laughs> drawing faces. But we'll meet you back here at step two. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the background and I'm going to start with the blue sky. We'll start with the easy part. I'm going to take my, uh, I always call it a spatula because I try to tell you all, all the time that it behaves, your palette knife behaves like a spatula. Uh, so if you're new, what I mean by that is that um, kind of like in the kitchen, you really only use the soft bendable end of the spatula. So you're really only going to be using the uh, like top one inch of your palette knife is the bendy part that you use to kind of mix and pick up your paint with. So I'm going to pick up a little white and I'm going to go over here to this cerulean blue and this is a very strong cerulean blue. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just barely get a tiny tap of that mixed in with the white. I'm just using the end of that knife to kind of just mix it up. It should feel nice and creamy, buttery, buttery, <clears throat> and nice. And, and that's my light blue. I'll go ahead and make up the mountain color. And that's just going to be a little less white and a little more of this really blue. Make a kind of dark mountain color. Tell you what I'm going to do. In that, I'm going to make it a mixture. I'm going to uh, add just a little bit of this cool ultramarine and make it look like it's going to be in the distance. So cooler colors recede back into the distance. Warm colors advance. Cool colors recede. So if I put a little bit of that cool blue in there, it's going to push that mountain. That's why they say purple mountain majesty. That's why mountains look kind of purple. They're they lose all. Uh, intensity and warmth when they're far away like that. I'm putting more. So that's going to be, I was almost maybe 50-50 on those two blues to get that to be cool enough. And we can start with those two and we'll start putting them in and reminding everybody to hold your brush back about three quarters or I guess maybe that's two thirds of the way back on the handle instead of here where you're going to be using a lot of finger and wrist action. You want to hold it back and it comes from your shoulder, like a golf or tennis swing. So that way you're handling the paint very gently. And speaking of gently, I'm going to sweep like I'm sweeping with a broom, pick up that paint, get a nice big hunk of paint. And again, you're not drawing. We're gonna get in the habit of having that brush really low, a low angle, so it kind of just smoothly spreads like icing. And Anne has been doing this with me for how long, Anne? <laughs> I think it's 17. 17 years. How has that much time passed? She moved in down the street from me, and her father used to paint with me. And uh, he convinced her to start painting with me. And then she ended up moving into her parents' house. Her father was my neighbor before she was. 
she moved into the house she grew up in and was a couple doors down from me and we <clears throat> have shared a lot of memories since then. Yes, a lot of trips, a lot of memories. <clears throat> and taught a cooking class for a while. We uh, had a lot of fun meeting a lot of new people that way and, and then she's met a lot of people through my studio. This little dot here that we did of yellow ochre could make your sky turn a little green, so yes, I might avoid is. it just for a little <clears throat> while. We can come back and touch that up later. I'm gonna pick up the mountain color. And we, we don't have any trips planned right now. Darn COVID. I can't tell you how many people have yeah. asked me. Can't tell you how many people have asked me to organize another trip to France. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do it. I think the problem will be, it's a lot of work. And it, <clears throat> it's, the, it's not a vacation for you. Well, really. it can be. Right. Um, if everything goes well. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> Part that I think would be hard is I wouldn't be able to accommodate in one week's time. I think all the people that want to come. Well, you just have to stay over there weeks. for like a month. But I think then a lot of it is when people want to make alterations to the trip. You know, can my husband come half the time? Can I? Can we leave for half the time? And all that kind of thing just starts getting really complicated. You say no. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I could say no. <laughs> You're right, Anne. And I think I. Um, you might right put there. a little white <clears throat> right in there. Make a little cloud hanging over that mountain mm -hmm. back there. Pretty green up there. Yeah, so now we're, uh, oh yeah, we can fix that later. <clears throat> that one little dot of yellow ochre can kind of do that. Um, now I am going to make the green. I'm gonna make three shades of green. The first shade I'm gonna make is this bright yellow green here. So I'm going to pick up the lemon yellow. Oops. Now the greens that come with this Marie's kit aren't really good for <clears throat> natural outdoor grass and tree green, so we're gonna make some greens using yellow and blue. So we've picked up the lemon yellow and we're gonna put in just a little bit, and I mean little again, of the ultramarine blue, that's the navy blue, and that makes that really pretty bright grass green. I'm gonna make just a little more of it. So it was lemon yellow and a tiny tap of ultramarine blue. And then I, that's my light shade. Then I'm gonna make a medium shade, which is maybe a little bit more of this um, kind of olive color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the yellow ochre, which is more, is gonna make it more olive -y instead of a pure bright grass green. It's gonna make it, and then I'm gonna go over here, tap a little bit of, maybe a little bit more than you did before of the ultramarine, that navy blue. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to have a little of that lemon yellow in there. So the both, both yellows are in there. And it doesn't look like it's coming out very well. I need more blue and maybe more lemon yellow. I think I had too much ochre in my formula at first. <clears throat> Quiet around this building today, man. Mm -hmm. I was working here yesterday in the studio and the bridal salon across the hall was having a huge bridesmaids party and really? there was some champagne involved and it got very noisy over there. <laughs> very noisy, I was glad I wasn't filming. And then for the darkest blue, uh, green, I mean, the darkest green, let's start with the dark color, the navy blue. And let's add, uh, I'm gonna get some more lemon yellow for us out here. Well, let's do this. If you need more lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm going to put some lemon yellow in that. 
pile of uh, navy blue, ultramarine blue. And then I'm going to add a little white. And it definitely needs some more lemon yellow. There we go. That's better. So that's that kind of, it's a bluish green. So that again looks like it's in the distance. And these yellow greens are going to be put up front. All right, so we have three shades of green. And I'm going to start with this lightest one. That was lemon yellow with just a tiny cap of ultramarine blue. So it's this pretty kind of liney color. And I'm spreading it in for this grass. I'm using kind of long, flat strokes like I did with the sky and the mountain. I forgot to tell you what kind of strokes we were using. Just kind of spreading it with the flat side of the brush. I'm going to make some more. I'm just going to pick up some yellow with my brush. Tiny tap in that blue. So you can mix a little bit with your brush. It's easier to mix larger amounts with your palette knife. Spread that on. Um, and right above that, I'm going to put this little bit more blue-green. I may add a little yellow to it as I'm going. Oh, I don't know about that. And again, you should uh, <clears throat> always remind students, now I'm, I'm painting this green and leaving a gap where it doesn't touch the sky. I'll come back later and fill in those gaps very slowly, but in order to just keep moving and making progress, um, I just kind of leave a gap between the mountain and the sky right there so those colors don't mix together if I'm painting too, too fast. And believe me, painting slow is wonderful. It's fine. Students often worry that other students are faster than they are. What is it? Comparison is the... Yeah, I always say it's on, it's on my card and your boxes to your first welcome card. On the back, it says, comparison is the thief of joy. And that's pretty much true about all of life. You start comparing yourself to everybody else all the time, you're never going to measure up. So just be proud of what you do and keep practicing. That's the only way to get better. I'm, at, I'm still adding a little more of that lemon yellow right into that mountain. It's looking a little too blue. So the only way you're going to get better at painting is just, just keep practicing. If you ever get discouraged with these lessons, you know, you could always pick up or order a couple more canvases and try it again. Just definitely send me a note and tell me what was challenging about it and see if I can help you. And now I'm going to go into this medium green that I made and hold it down here into the grass. And I can see that right now I'm going to want to add more yellow to that as well. Definitely. Just going to add that yellow right now. Again, I'm just using a long, flat And there's, uh, there should always be enough paint sliding between the brush and the canvas that you just feel, you feel it sliding underneath your brush. It looks like I'm going to need a little more, so I'm going to use my knife this time, pick up the rest of that yellow. <clears throat> I might have enough here, thank you. So when I was saying earlier that warm colors advance towards you and cool colors recede, so that helps us what we call tilt the picture plane. So that this is just a flat surface, but we want it to look three-dimensional. So um, we um, put the cooler colors in the back and the warmer colors up front. So I'm going to add, and later on we'll add some real warm grass up front, but I'm going to add a little yellow to this green that's up front. Make that look like it's coming towards us and closer to us. I'm just going to tap in around. 
feet. And just feel that paint sliding all the time. Make sure you have enough paint. Once we start hearing that brush on the canvas, we start knowing, realizing that we need more paint. And I think that that's about it. Now this isn't all completely finished. You see, I left these gap areas between colors. We'll come back and touch up those at the, at the very end. But I'm gonna pause the video here and let you all get caught up at home. And we'll meet you back here to paint the lion. So I'm gonna take the palette knife and pick up some of the white for the lightest shade. And I'm going to add, hmm, I'm going to add just a little bit of this chocolate brown that we call burnt umber. And that would make the lightest shade. And then I'm going to make a second shade that's light but a little bit golden. So I'm going to take white plus a little bit of that special raw sienna that I asked you all to put out this time. And I want this shade to be a little bit deeper than that first shade. So we're going to add a little more of that raw sienna. And then let's make, so that's kind of the lightest shade. And then we make kind of this, um, well, I'm gonna make that a little darker. I want that, I hope I didn't add too much there. A medium. So that's kind of a medium gold. And then I'm gonna make one that's kind of a uh, white again, a little bit of white. A little bit of both of those last two colors, the raw sienna and the burnt umber. Make kind of a light brown. And we'll put, I'm gonna add a little more. I wanna make sure we see those colors in there. So that is almost equal parts of white, raw sienna and burnt umber. Umbers that chocolatey brown. And we'll just start painting with these first three colors and then I might make three darker shades that we'll put in next. And I'll tell you what, while we're, while we're at it, I'm gonna add another shade. I've got these three pretty colors here and then I'm gonna go straight to this burnt sienna and put it right there. That's going to be that reddish brown that we'll drag in a little bit up here. So I'm going to sweep with my brush, pick that paint up, start putting it in where I see the lightest areas, maybe right, first of all, right here on the side of this forehead where the sun's hitting him. And then maybe right here on this little area below his nose. And then I'm going to take that lightest color and just try not to get it mixed into the green. I'm leaving a gap. But the lightest color is on the side of this mane. So three areas, and there's the forehead, the side of this lip, and then this mane. Whoops, I just got some green in there. No worries. Sometimes I just take a little water on my brush and try to wipe it out. We can cover it up. If you just paint very gently, you can cover that paint right up if you get mixed up with the wrong color. And then I'm going to take maybe a little more white and try to get a little more of that light color. But also the bottom of the, his little chin is all, that was kind of, kind of the whitest area of fur. And there's a little bit of white fur on this side, catching the sun. And I'm going to go into the medium, this yellow gold, and it's kind of the next lightest color coming down the front of his nose. So we're laying all these shapes in, these color shapes in, um, come side by side like a jigsaw puzzle, just piece by piece, and then we'll blend them all a little bit later. Let's see, there's a lot of that light right on the top of his nose. 
and then a little bit in here. And it almost starts to come together like a puzzle. And oh, this, this pretty golden color is definitely right here along the front of the feet. The left side, on the left side of our drawing of the feet is that golden color. And I usually just put a finger on this canvas if you don't have an easel at home. And that's why I paint most of these laying down on, with the canvas laying on the table. If you have it at home, it's an easy, they're small enough that you don't need a big easel to paint on. Um, there's a little bit of those lightest colors right here on the top of his back. So in painting, we're always thinking about the light source. Where is the sun or the lamp? Where's the light source? Even in a nocturnal scene where you're painting a scene in the moonlight, you know, the, we've got to see where is the moon in relation to whatever you're painting because that's where the light's going to be coming. So our light source looks like it's over here coming from this side. Um, so let's take that next color. This is your medium light color. And that's the side of the face. It is a cold, dark day here in Louisville. We are not expecting any snow though, are we? I didn't see the weather. Well, we've had a few flurries, but nothing. <clears throat> it's supposed to be like 40 or so today. Oh, okay. Not like nine, like it has mm -hmm. been. <clears throat> And while we're painting with this medium color, I'll go ahead and put that next on the mane. So since the light's coming from the left, I kind of alternated the light medium shades of light on the side there. And that color can also be used on the feet. Next color. So they almost go in like little stripes of color that will blend later. And it looks like I have to make some more of those colors. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just go through them again. It was white. First pile was white with a tiny speck of burnt umber. And the next one was, actually I don't know if I need, well, I'll go ahead. The next one was white and a pretty couple specks of Raw Sienna. I named one of my dogs Sienna because she was the color of this, burnt Sienna, kind of a chestnut color when I when I got her. She's sort of faded to a medium brown, I guess. And she's 10 now. She's a nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> Anne's known her. Sibyl. Anne's known her her whole life. Sybil Sienna. She is crazy dog. Uh, so the last pile was white with a little bit of both of the raw sienna and the burnt umber. And that will get me through with just a little more, a few more areas to paint with those three before we move on. So that medium color is going to come on the back here. And then down a little bit further on the back is that next darker color. So since the sun's up above, we're getting darker and darker as we go down. And let's see, I need probably a little more of the medium color in here on the side of that face. So a lot of people, I think when they first start painting, they don't realize that this is the process. I think it kind of surprises them that it can be this loose. Mm -hmm. at the beginning and really just pull it together at the end. This is called direct method painting. When you just paint everything all at once, wet, wet paint into wet paint. And this is the way we like to paint here at the studio. I have a couple of painters that like to paint total, uh, not total realism, but a little more realism. And they're, uh, they use a very, a very, uh, what specific drawing that's very mm -hmm. um, detailed. 
and they paint, like I had one student who paints flowers and she paints every little petal and every uh, curve of the petal and does a very detailed drawing. No thanks. <laughs> it sounds exhausting. All right, now I'm gonna take the, um, <laughs> well, I guess if I had like more than three, medium color. Three movements. Yeah, it's nice to be able to just kind of make some, not make it up, but loosen it up, you know, make it a little looser than reality and kind of interpret it in an impressionistic way. Mm -hmm. That's what we like to do. I made a little more of that, the darkest of the three light colors. And I'm gonna tap it up in here before I put some of that burnt sienna in there. Now I am moving the brush strokes in the direction of the mane. Just like when I was putting these on the face, you kind of, with oil paints, you usually follow the direction of the form, and that doesn't have to always be true. You can paint like really loosely by uh, kind of chopping up the shape of the, the, the form, and maybe sometime I should try a really, really loose painting like that. But we're, we're painting somewhat realistically. Like I said, it's impressionist. I'm gonna take now that burnt sienna, that's that pretty reddish brown, and I'm just gonna pull it up through there start putting some of that mane. Mm -hmm. And maybe a few places down here where he's got a little bit of that burnt sienna. I'll include the reference photo that I purchased online from a royalty-free website uh, because I obviously did not take this picture, so I have to make sure I'm not infringing on any copyright. I'm gonna put a little warm shadow along the side of the face with that burnt sienna as well. Maybe a little over here. And I think we're ready to make up the three darker shades of brown. Cleaning my brush out each time. If you're gonna make, if you're gonna really change colors, <clears throat> clean, clean that light brown out because we're moving into the dark browns. I tell you what we could do first. We could put uh, let's t let's pick up that black. Now, I usually don't put black out, but I noticed I usually had you all make black, and I did. I surprised you. Oh, you did. Because as Anne knows, I always tell everybody most time most of the time when you see black, especially out in nature, it's reflecting a lot of blue or a lot of green. But on this photo, parts of this animal. Sometimes when I'm painting dogs as well, uh, their noses are sometimes pretty black. So we're just gonna go ahead and use the black. And I'm gonna out, I outline those eyes. And now I'm using what I call the chisel end of that brush because I am kind of more drawing right now than painting. So I'm just using the end of that brush to kind of dab those. And it doesn't have to, he can look a little scary. We'll work on him later. And the ends of his nose curled up just a little bit and then it came across pretty straight, and then it kind of curled up. I guess that nostril kind of flares up. And then this line is pretty straight across. Like a mustache. That's what it looks like, exactly. And then it comes down about a half an inch, just kind of straight. I'm just using that chisel end of my brush. And then it came out under his beautiful muzzle there. Look at that. And uh, while, we're, while we're picking up that black, I might just put it in a couple of places where it's darkest, like maybe under this arm and under this arm. And maybe right under here at the side of the face. But I don't want too much black on this canvas. Black just ends up overpowering. I think there was a kind of a dark right there and that's about all I'm gonna do. The rest of this, I'll just do in a dark brown. It's really too much black. You know, Anna, really, she knows after 17 years how much I avoid pure black. <laughs> Just like we avoid pure white. There's rarely a lot of pure white or pure black when you're painting impressionistic. Because you're really getting the impression of the light and the colors, everything surrounding you. So I'm gonna now, let's pick up with your knife and just move it down to your work area. That burnt umber brown. It's all by itself. And we're gonna put that in quite a few areas. It's gonna be here where the mane meets the legs. That's a shadow. 
pretty much all the way down along the bottom of the mane here in the front where it's all shadow. Where it meets his foot here. And I'm just gonna start kind of pulling those up a little bit. And right along the side of the face, just kind of start. A lot of people walking around there now, mm -hmm. out in the hall. Heels. <laughs> a lot of women wear uh, wearing boots and heels on the brick floor out there. It's kind of noisy. And again, I'm not pulling this up into that blue mountain yet. I'm just trying. I'm stopping short, and I'll show you later how we're gonna pull that in there. Pulling. I'm pulling these hairs a little longer each time as I come around, very lightly. So Ann knows, my students know, I'm always saying, hold that brush lightly. I'm tapping here now, just picking up the burnt umber brown and tapping. So hopefully this isn't too hard this time. Yeah, it's going, well. no, it's going pretty well, right? Yes. So even my paint, students who painted with me forever have rarely painted live like this. So it's a little different for everybody. So it's a little new. Just kind of follow instructions as I'm going along. Sometimes you all watch a demonstration that I do and then you and then you paint. Which, by the way, I need to do a workshop soon, don't yes, I? Yes, you do. <laughs> we love Saturday afternoon or Friday or Saturday workshops when we can set aside about four hours and I'll have some soup and we will uh, just kind of come in during the winter and all just enjoy each other's friendship and work on some challenging lessons that hopefully I can have people learning new things. Even Anne, <laughs> even myself. The nice thing about oil painting is you're always learning. I think Anne's husband and many houses will say, are you still taking lessons? What do you have to, left to learn? <laughs> you can paint every day till the end of your days and you're, you'll still be learning, which is what we enjoy. Yep. <clears throat> I'm just still using that burn number brown and, and occasionally I was picking up some of that black and it sort of spreads around, but I think that's all right. The side of this face is all pretty dark over here. I don't know what I did. I think I got his face a little too narrow. Well, maybe not. I think I can fix that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, before I lose that shape, I'm going to put more to the side of his face right there. Kind of widen his face just a little bit. And then maybe some of the red burnt sienna comes under his eye right there. And I think he had a little bit there and there. Above his eye, little tufts of hair that was a little more red. And then I'm going to take the burnt umber. And I'm going to just kind of make a little line right there to kind of show the outline, the outline of the side of that nose. Now that black, boy, you have to fight, fight it too. You could get a little touch of it in it gets in the way. So all of this is a little bit darker than this green on the right side here is a little darker than the left side. And I don't want to lose this pretty curve of his muzzle right there. I'm going to get some more white out here. Thank you. Well, sounds like there's a bridal party coming in. <laughs> I guess that's the new thing when the bride tries on her dress. Instead of just having one or two friends or family, mm -hmm. they uh, they have eight or ten and make it a, a big party. So everything seems to be bigger than life these days. <laughs> My daughter got married two years ago and that really wasn't as much of a big thing. Now uh, with this big bridal shop I have next door to me there. Big, big, big groups come in. She's in large too. <clears throat> yeah, she's taking over a good bit of the building. Uh, so I put more white out. Did you need some more white? 
and I'm going to put that in at the bottom of his chin. Sometimes when I'm talking about an object, I don't, don't know if I should refer to it as a male or female, but this time I'm pretty sure it's a male. It's a male. And since I have some white on the end of my brush, I'm going to go ahead and tap a little bit right on the front toes, the front of his toe in, on each side. One of my favorite movies was Born Free. I know. I loved that movie. That, that probably dates Anne and I to our age. <laughs> our kids could probably say Lion King was their favorite <laughs> Lion movie. But uh, Born Free, if you can ever find it out there, it is good. So I'm going to take now just raw sienna and fill in some of those areas. That's a little bit too gold, but I might have to mix that with Excuse a little me. umber. So the darker side of each foot. So just mix some of your medium browns together there. And we'll, we'll, we're going to fine tune and work on all of these shapes in the final step, which we're getting ready to take a break in a minute here and we'll start that final step where we're really fine tune the eyes and nose and mouth and the mane. We'll fine tune everything. Wow. My, his little chin where I got that black got in there, I got very dirty and gray. So I'm going to have to very gently add some white back in there. This shape here is kind of wrong, but like I said, we're going to fix all that in the next step. I'm going to pause the cameras and everybody can get caught up and we'll see you back here for the next step. Did you do whiskers? I didn't. You know, I don't think we could see them in the photo, so I didn't pick that up. Get, make sure you kind of get that fur going in different directions down here at the bottom. Pull it up over the grass a little bit. See, there's a little wispy curl he has right there. And I make sure I have this nice angle to his face right here. There's like a little cheekbone that goes in. And I think during the break here, but before we meet back in the foyer at the studio, I will um, probably take a look at these eyes for both of us and see what we, we can talk about it on the other side, talk about what we need to, to do to these eyes. I still think they're a little too big. So. Mm -hmm. His eyes almost look like they were squinting more in the photo, so maybe I need to just kind of, and they were a little more almond shaped. There we go, bring that down a little bit. And the great thing about oils, well, one, one thing we like about them is they don't dry so fast, but if you want to rework something and you want it to dry, you're going to have to wait a little bit and they do take a little while to dry. Now these water-based oils do dry a lot faster than regular oils. But you can always paint right over those eyes later. They're much better with a smaller eye there. Awesome. And I think we're ready to meet back in the studio, Anne. We can make a last couple touch-ups before we if we think we need to, we can tell everybody what they were. Okay. But I think, oh, I know one thing. Whoop, last step. I want to take some of this grass color, which I'm out of yellow again. Let's get some yellow. And I'm going to make some light grass strokes. So I talked about <laughs> the, the uh, warm colors advancing. So I'm going to take a little of this yellow with a little of this green that I have left over any of those greens to add some yellow and we're going to put some brush strokes up over these feet and over the mane. I don't 
think I made his feet quite big enough in this one. Um, if I can, I'm going to add a little oomph to his feet in there. There we go, that's better. Another big, beautiful thing about them is their, you know, that big, beautiful muzzle, the mane, and those big feet. And then I'm going to pull that grass up so it looks a more realistic. Any more mane that I want to pull out. Get that pretty shape of that mane. And I think we're about ready to wrap it up. I'll have to stand back. You know, that's one of the reasons we might make some more changes is I don't have to stand back and, and really review some of these shapes. And it's always a good idea to stand back. When you're really up close with it, uh, you don't sometimes see what you need to do. So I will see you all back here. Just a little softness to that stars right there. And of course, here I am ending the video fighting the black. <laughs> All right, we'll see you back here in the foyer. Okay, welcome back into the foyer. We're going to do a little review here. Uh, so this was the line I started with when I paint um, alone in the studio and I really am concentrating more than when I'm talking and filming. It always turns out a little bit better. So um, today while we were talking, he looks a little different. I might still have to make a tweak here or there. And then there's Ann's little fellow there. And, um, you know, if, if you feel like you something's looking incorrect, look at the space between the eyes. Mm -hmm. I think Ann and I both had to push the eyes a little bit further apart during the break. Just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch, mm -hmm. uh, either way. And then um, I think Ann, we made the nose a little bigger. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we had the darks in, kind of creating that... Um, eggplant, what is it, eggplant shape, or it's like an upside down pear right. shape? Yeah, pear shape. Um, and upside down pear shape to his face. And hopefully you guys didn't have a hard time with it. People just get nervous because it's a face, you know? Mm -hmm. And it really shouldn't be that much harder than anything else. Uh, but proportions, you want to look at like, you know, sh how long the nose is, or did you get too much length here? Maybe not enough forehead, those are just some things to check. And please send me a picture anytime and uh, I, on my email and or on the Facebook group post and ask some questions and we'll see where we can help you if you need help. And uh, I thought it was a fun project. Yes. Uh, my first lion. I think it might be my first lion too. Well, your second. Oh, my second lion. <laughs> okay, well, we will see you next month. And please let me know if you need any help with your lion. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.